So our lesson for sine and cosine graphing is going to start, they separate the lessons into 13.4 and 13.5, um, but in all likelihood we probably touched on both sections in one day, so make sure you watch both videos. This video is going to um, specifically address how to graph the sine function. So some vocabulary from our exploring periodic data lesson from yesterday. Uh, the top line here we refer to as the maximum line which makes sense with our knowledge of what maximum means in math. And then this middle green line here, that is called the midline for graphing. And then this bottom red line here is called the minimum. And then these two blue, like, thick lines here, these bars, they're representing the height from the midline to the max line or the midline to the minimum line. These are the same heights. Um, because those are referred to as the amplitude. So remember the amplitude is the power of the wave or the size of the wave. Um, there is a, another vocab term we learned yesterday, it's called the period, which is the length of time it takes for the cycle to complete. So once you have this repeating cycle graphed, you have to identify like a beginning and ending point. It doesn't really matter where you start, but you have to make sure you get through one complete cycle. So if I just arbitrarily decide to start here, and then I start kind of graphing this guy, once it gets to this point, um, it stops. Now, you can't really see anything on the, on the axes down here, so let me give you a little insight. This is 0, and then right here, this is 1 pi. So remember our work with radians a couple lessons ago. So this point here is directly halfway between 0 and pi, so this must be pi over 2, or half pi. So that is the period length for this particular graph. It takes a half pi radian cycle to go through one complete cycle. All right, we'll get to that more once we start our lesson here. So we're going to be graphing what's called the sine function. And we're going to start with real basic sine functions. This is the general form, um, but on your notes, I'd like you to kind of adjust that. We're going to eventually be looking at something that looks like this. A, and then sine, and then instead of theta, well, they are going to use theta mostly. Sometimes they use x, but there's sometimes a number in front of theta. And then in an in a upcoming lesson, we're also going to have this plus k thing off to the side. So thinking about our knowledge of other functions, this plus k part is going to be a vertical shift. We are going to have no vertical shifts today, but in an upcoming lesson, we will. This number right here, though, this b term, we'll talk more about that later in the lesson. But basically, this number here um, changes the length of the period. So technically, <laughs> B represents the number of cycles that will happen between 0 and 2, by the time you get to 2 pi. Um, but you don't need to know anything about B yet other than it's going to change the period length. Alright, so if B is 1, that means there's no changes that are happening. We don't really have tons of knowledge about what's called the unit circle because we kind of skipped over that for our Algebra 2 course. So what I'd like you to recognize on this next screen is what's called the general shape of the sine graph. So the sine graph, and then we have a, whoops, <laughs> a maximum and a minimum line here. The sine graph is always going to take on the same shape to go through one complete cycle. He's going to start by plotting a point in the midline, and then the next point we plot will be located at the maximum line, and then the next point we plot will be at the uh, midline, there we go, and then it goes down to the minimum and then back to the midline. So that's the pattern that we're going to be having for every single sine graph that we are going to graph. And if I just want you to graph one cycle, you'll see exactly that. So um, here they're going to talk to you about how to find the period. So the period is normally 2 pi, meaning the cycle completes at 2 pi. However, if you have a number inside your function, that b value we talked about a minute ago, that changes the length of the period. So what I'd like you to write down in your notes somewhere is this formula, that the period of a sine graph equals 2 pi divided by b. So that number b, if it's not a 1, it's going to change the length of the period. So their example here was they took 2 pi and they divided by, I look inside the formula, and there is a 4 in the b place, if you will. So when I reduce that fraction, this reduces to 1 half pi, 
which means the new period length of this graph is going to be half pi instead of 2 pi. How we graph that is a little complicated. We'll talk about that next. Um, but finding the period is important to us. All right. Um, <laughs> let's just do these for some, some good warm-up about what we're looking at. These were like emulated on a graphing calculator. But here's the end of the first sine cycle. It goes mid, upper, or maximum, mid, minimum, mid. Mid. Sometimes I call these upper and lower because it's a lot <laughs> easier to say than mid, max, min, max. Okay. Um, so there's one cycle, and then there's another cycle. So there are two cycles. Um, then it says, what is the period of this sine curve? Well, they didn't do a great job of labeling anything. They kind of did it off to the side. So it says right here, your x's go from 0, so this is 0, and this is 4 pi. So if I kind of think about labeling accordingly, half wazies would be 2 pi. And remember the definition of period is the length of time it takes to go through one complete cycle. So from 0 to 2 pi is exactly that, 2 pi. So in this next graph, uh, starting our sine function here, we got one cycle, two cycle, three cycle. So three cycles, And then let's look here. They have that same window. So this is 0, and this is 4 pi. Oopsies. So halvesies. Now, it's a little difficult for me to tell where the half wave point is. Um, but I do notice, maybe. <laughs> I can't notice much, apparently. Uh, I think right here is the half wave point. Am I right? One, two. Oh, it's very hard for me to see for some reason. I think I have marks on my computer screen. That's part of my problem. I'm seeing tick marks that aren't there. That's crazy. All right. So here's 2 pi. Um, this guy right here must be 1 pi. That is super ultra confusing, guys. Um, for us, for Algebra 2, what I want you to understand... Oh, no. Pi over 2. Ignore me. I'm so confused. I can't see the marks. Pi over 2? No. I feel like they're missing some marks on this picture. Let me erase my marks and see if I can see them a little better. I don't know. So for sure that's 4 pi. I think this is supposed to be 2 pi. <laughs> I don't know. So we're supposed to figure out this point here to figure out this, this end of that cycle. Um, I'm not going to make you do this question in class. So in, in like a trig and a pre-calc class, we totally would have gone through that question and explained it. I just don't want to confuse Algebra 2 students, so we're going to cross that one off uh, as far as finding the period length, so don't panic. That was really confusing. I apologize. Okay, um, let's talk about a new word. This is called the amplitude. And we, well, it's not new. We knew that yesterday. Amplitude remembers the power of the wave, and the place you find it in your sine function is directly in front of the sine function. So if there's nothing there, there's really a 1, meaning the amplitude is 1. It goes up 1 unit and down 1 unit from the midline. Um, if this number is a 2, it goes up 2 units and down 2 units. But there is a little note here. It's always the absolute value of A, because sometimes, like in this formula here, they have a negative 2. Well, what that means is the amplitude is 2, but remember it's been reflected across the um, vertical axis. So we are getting a very brief introduction to sine and cosine graphing. So I'm not going to give you a lot of crazy things like reflections. and It gets way more complicated when you move on to trig and pre-calc. Uh, we're just getting the, the bare bones, the minimum of graphing here for us today. So never tell me that you have a negative amplitude. That's not an appropriate answer. All right, they want us to figure out the amplitude um, and then the value of A. So this is interesting. <laughs> they, they want us to start at the origin always for this worksheet. And then I notice something weird happens. It's going downwards first. So remember our sine function up until this point has always been going up first. So this guy's been reflected, which means that the A in the formula is going to be negative. But that doesn't mean my amplitude is negative. But my amplitude is always the power of the wave, the size of the wave. So it goes up one, two, three blocks. Looks like they're counting by ones. So the amplitude is three, but the A value 
is going to be a negative 3 because it's been reflected. A little tricky there, huh? Oops. It's going for an eraser. Here we go. Um, this one, the sine function is going in the normal direction, so that means it's not reflected, so we don't have a negative value for a. So the amplitude and the a are going to be the same thing this time. And if I could figure out the power size of this wave, I'd be good to go. So it looks like it's going from 0 up to... Am I supposed to know what that means? All right, <laughs> 0.4 is this line right here, so this must be 0.2. So continuing up, this must be 0.6. So the amplitude is 0.6. And also the A value is 0.6, because it was not reflected. All right, so here's that little formula about how to find the period. Um, the, here's the true definition of B. I kind of crossed it off. But B tells you how many cycles will be between 0 and 2 pi. So if you're looking at a graph and your job is to find the value of B, sometimes that's the easier way to think about it. But I'll give you a couple different options. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to um, follow these exact steps for how we're going to graph our functions. I kind of have my own, I go to the beat of my own little drummer here, guys. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to be graphing something. I'm sure they gave me a function somewhere in there, didn't they? Okay, right here. So we're going to be graphing a sine curve with amplitude of 2 and a period of 4 pi and a midline at 0. So what I'd like you to do is probably ignore their steps for the most part. And on your note somewhere, we have this. It's a coordinate plane, but it's a graphing friend coordinate plane. So this is the origin. Um, and they want our midline at 0. So this guy right here is going to be used as our midline. I'm going to label that over here as 0. And then it said our amplitude was 2. So I'm going to draw in our max and midlines. And I'm going to label them. That's the key piece. A lot of kids just draw them and never label them, and that's not good enough. So amplitude of 2 means this guy up here is a positive 2, because 2 units up from 0. And this guy here would be negative 2 units down from 0. So make sure these are all labeled on the vertical axis. And then we're going to graph on the horizontal axis. So here's what I do. I graph the shape, and then I go back and label it. Um, and how I label it is interesting, I suppose. All right, the period's going to be 4 pi. And they want us to graph one cycle. So the shape for sine is this, where it starts in the middle, and it goes to the upper, back to middle, down to the lower line, and then back to the middle. So you need to sketch that, and it should be symmetrical. And remember, sine for us in Algebra 2 always going to start in the origin. So here's your first point, and then here's your upper point. You should be graphing five points total. Back to the middle, lower, back to the middle. And then you do the best you can to draw in this curve, and it looks like a wave. It's supposed to be smooth. <laughs> also supposed to be symmetrical, but, you know, I'm drawing it, so deal. There's one complete cycle. I know this started at zero, and I think I know where that point is, because that is the ending of the first period, and it says the period length is 4 pi. So I have to label all four of these points. So this guy is 4 pi. Now, it is up to you how you continue labeling it. Um, what some kids like to do is they just play the halfway game. So they go, okay, well this is halfway between 0 and 4 pi, so that's 2 pi. And then this is halfway again, so 2 pi cut in half again is 1 pi. And then they count. So every one of these little marks here is a 1 pi. So 1 pi, 2 pi, this must be 3 pi. That's what I need to see when you graph. A decently done sketch uh, with the appropriate shape, and then I need to see labels on both of your axes. Here's another way how we could figure out those blue points, though. You can find what are called quarter points. And this actually might be a better method for those of you moving on to trig and pre-calc, because you're going to have way more complicated graphing later, and having things is not really a great way to do it when you have what are called phase shifts. So quarter points is where you take whatever the period is, and not necessarily 2 pi, because it's not always 2 pi, and you divide them into quarters. So in our case, our quarter point would have been our period of 4 pi, and if you divide that by 4, you get pi. So that tells me what I'm counting by. So I go to my first mark after 0, and I go, okay, well, clearly that's 0, and this is 1 pi, and then I start counting by that, that unit, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So that's how I typically do them. Um, for the time being, we'll, we'll kind of we'll do both, if that's all right. <laughs> so we're going to be graphing this function next. 
So they go, they walk you through their process, and basically, I think you just got to identify some stuff. I can see that the amplitude is one half. It's a sine graph, so the shape is still going to be the same shape of starting in the middle, upper, middle, lower, middle. And then the period has been changed because there's a 2 inside of the function there. So the period is supposed to be 2 pi, but it's divided by this b value. So b is 2 in this problem, which means the new period length is pi. Now while we're at it, since I'm calculating things, let's go find quarter points. So remember, the formula for finding quarter points is to take the period length. My pen will work. There we go. So the formula is period and then cut into quarters, that's the name quarter points. So our period of now pi cut into quarters, and that doesn't reduce, so that's what we are going to count by. We're going to count every pi over 4 once we get graphing. So I think I gave you, some, yep, I gave you some graph, a coordinate plane on your paper. The midline is still at 0 for us today. Everything today and tomorrow is going to be a midline of 0. Um, real basic ones, no vertical shifting. And then I'm just going to draw in my max and mid lines. And they should be symmetrical. It's difficult for me. But then the key is can you label it? So remember the amplitude is one half. So going up one half unit would be 0.5. Or you can literally call it one half. And then going down half unit would be negative 0.5. So make sure these three vertical lines are labeled the max, mid, and min. And then we're graphing one sine cycle. So I'm going to sketch in what it's supposed to look like. And then I'm going to try my best to connect. There we go. You know what? I should confirm that they only wanted one cycle. Yeah, one cycle. Sometimes they want two cycles. We'll talk about that later. All right. I, my work's all on the last screen. So remember the period's pi. And um, that means that's the ending mark here. Because if this is 0, this is the end of the first cycle. So it's up to you how you fill all these, these marks in, guys. We know the quarter points. We actually already found that to be... Come on, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Um, we know these are going to be pi over 4s. So if you use that method, this is 1 pi over 4. This would be 2 pi over 4. We'll reduce that in a moment. This is 3 pi over 4. And this is 4 pi over 4. So... If you look at reducing, this guy and this guy reduce, pi over, 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2, and 4 pi over 4 is pi. So what I usually do in that case for Algebra 2 kids is we just we list them out and count without reducing, and then we come back at the end and reduce them real fast. If you're comfortable reducing the fractions as you go, that's awesome. Go ahead and do that. Now remember, the other way to label these was to start, because you knew this was pi, and then if you go halfway, that's half pi. And then you go half again, and that'd be quarter pi. But you still got to count by quarters. So I think I've come to the conclusion with my Algebra 2 kids that the halving method doesn't really work well because you guys don't enjoy fractions very much. So maybe let's try the quarter point method. All right, we're going to graph these. Just one sine, one sine cycle. So 3 sine theta, we're going to have a midline of 0, and then amplitude of 3. So when I draw in my max and min lines, They are going to be labeled accordingly. And then I'm just going to sketch in the points for sine. There we go. Now we got to label the other axes. So I notice inside the theta, there's, there's nothing other than a 1. So the period has not changed because 2 pi divided by 1 is still going to be 2 pi. So I'm going to go ahead and find our quarter points so I know what to call everything. So you take your period and you divide it into quarters or divide by 4. So 2 pi divided by 4 would be, oops, quarter point, uh, half pi, which is pi over 2. So you are going to count by 1 pi over 2s. This is going to get a little tricky, okay? This is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4 things we're labeling. So this is 1 pi over 2, this is 2 pi over 2, we'll come back to that. This is 3 pi over 2, and this is 4 pi over 2. So the only thing I expect you to do, do too now is come back and reduce these guys for me. 
2 pi over 2, better known as pi, and 4 pi over 2, better known as 2 pi. Remember a minute ago we said the period was 2 pi? And look where we ended. 2 pi. Nailed it. All right, let's try another one here. This one's kind of tricky because of the fraction right off the bat. So this is 4 times the sine of, instead of theta over 2, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 half times theta. I'm going to kind of separate the fraction from the theta because now you can see the b value is actually a 1 half. This gets a little tricky. The amplitude is clearly a 4. So I can label those pretty easily. Starting at 0, amplitude of 4 would take me up to positive 4 and down to negative 4. I'm going to spread this one out a little bit so I have room to write. Or not. <laughs> there we go. I get a lot of kids who do all of this work and then they don't go label the axes on the horizontal and that's a shame. I know that's zero. Your job is to label all these quarter points. So let's go find those quarter points. But first, we need to find the period. The period is 2 pi divided by b. Oh, well, wah, wah, that's a little confusing. We're dividing by a fraction. So 2 pi divided by 1 half is the same thing as 2 pi times 2 over 1. Remember, dividing by fractions is multiplying by the reciprocal. So the period is actually going to be 4 pi. So I know this point right here is 4 pi. Label it if you want, but I'm going to go find the quarter points. So quarter points, remember, you take your period, you divide by 4. Well, that's pretty easy for us. Our new period is 4 pi. So if I cut that in 4, we are going to count every pi. That's what I'm going to label with. So 0 pi, this is 1 pi, this is 2 pi, this is 3 pi, and that is 4 pi, which we just said the period is 4 pi, so we must have done something right. So pretty basic graphing today for us. Um, that is the sine function. You know, looking at the amount of time that took, I think for class we'll talk about just sine one day, and then we'll practice it, and then we'll come back and do cosine the next day. So make sure you're watching the right video. The only difference on cosine is that the shape of the graph is different. So it's once we do sine and practice it, we're going to have a really easy time with cosine.